Before we jump into this video, I have to give you guys a huge, huge spoiler warning as there is a ton of Breath of the Wild information packed in this video that you may not want spoiled, you may not want to hear as far as detailed dungeon information. So again, if you guys do not want to hear this, click off the video, but if you are interested, if you are curious, such as I was, then let's get into it. What's going on guys, just going here with Brand of Gas Day, coming at you with a load of juicy information regarding Breath of the Wild, including a look at the boss of one of the dungeons, some details of that boss, the dungeons, and, and just new information. So much stuff in here, this is all coming via Game Informer's official uh, hands-on with Breath of the Wild when they got to go uh, play it for themselves. So again, there's a load of information in here. We're gonna jump into a bullet point formation as uh, there's a lot to get through. So let's get started. All right, so the first piece of information we're gonna talk about is uh, new information regarding stables and horses and things like that. So again, in bullet point formation, uh, there's a new stable that the player encountered uh, called the Serene Stable. When I say the player, we're talking about the game informer uh, employee that was, uh, was playing the game. So there's a new stable called the Serene Stable. That's the name of the stable. There's a, it's a resting point ran by a Character named Yamo. Yamo offers the player a comfortable bed for Link to restore his health so you can sleep to restore your health. Um, you can also sleep overnight. If you sleep overnight you have to spend extra rupees to stay in a more expensive bed which awards the player with an extra yellow heart by morning. These yellow hearts cannot be gained back if lost in a battle. Um, so yeah, so uh, there's also a place to store your ho horses, things like that, opportunity to meet uh, with merchants and other non-player characters. Uh, stables are littered through Throughout the world, each one is ran by a distinct named character. Um, Link can uh, obviously keep multiple horses at a time, we've uh, already learned about that. Affection and loyalty is important with horses. Uh, feed and take care of horses to raise their stats. Can call her horses over to you, but uh, horses need to be within a certain proximity to be called. And horses can be killed by enemies. As this player encountered, uh, encountered sorry, uh, some enemies, he got off his horse to battle these enemies. And unfortunately his horse, which was named Kyle, got in the middle of things, uh, kind of in the crossfire. and the horse died. Let's have a moment of silence for Kyle. So the next piece of information we're going to cover is dynamic weather, which is very, very interesting stuff. So when the player woke up the next morning, he went to go back out into the world and it was a rainy day. Uh, he also encountered Beetle, if you guys remember Beetle. Obviously he is back in the game as we already knew and uh, he encountered Beetle very briefly. Beetle obviously sells different things and things like that and so that's really cool. Uh, so it was a rainy day and he went to go adventure back into the world. There was a rainstorm which eventually turned into a thunderstorm with lightning. The player started to notice that uh, his back was sparking and uh, all of a sudden a lightning bolt crashed right next to him and this is due to the fact that the metal on the player was attracting lightning to themselves. Therefore, players can unequip their metal weapons, shields, and metal armor to stay safe, or they can throw them near close by enemies to uh, put the enemies in danger in harm's way of a lightning strike, which is very, very cool. The next piece of information is regarding some shrines. So obviously we know that shrines function like mini dungeons. There's a hundred shrines in the world, which when discovering them and opening its doors, so you have to open the door to the shrine. Um, it creates a fast travel spot on the map. So that's going to make it uh, a lot easier to traverse the map. Uh, also, solving shrines puzzles will award players with a spirit orb, which is a valuable item that can be traded for unknown items. So this next batch of information is going to be a bunch of different things kind of mixed up together. You can call this the miscellaneous section, if you will. So different shields will offer different speeds and different kinds of control when using them to snowboard down hills. Obviously, we've seen the past we snowboard down snowy hills, down uh, grassy hills, down different kind of hills like that. Uh, but keep in mind that uh, it was noted before that using your shields to do so will damage them over time. Killing animals in the cold and snowy areas will freeze flash the meat so you can preserve them to cook them, uh, cook the meat later. Just as that happens in the cold, if you kill an animal with things like fire arrows for example, that will instantly cook the meat. Uh, regarding your stamina meter, it encompasses things like sprinting, paragliding, and climbing, so all those things will drain your stamina when doing them. Uh, your meter can be upgraded, your stamina meter that is, but Nintendo would not say how. Now this one's very interesting, so the player was walking around, he's seen a rock that looked a little bit uh, suspicious, so he hit it with a hammer. When he did that, he got rupees out of the rock, so this shows that we can mine rocks uh, for rupees, 
and uh, we can use the rocks as well to, for different things like crafting and stuff like that. You can also mark points of interest on the map using different kinds of symbols. Now, there's about a hundred of these symbols that could be used on the map to mark these points of interest, which includes uh, sword, shield, bow and arrow, pot, star, chest, skull, leaf, Diamonds. You can, you know, mark things where there's enemies, where there's chests, where there's, you know, uh, rupees. Maybe you can mark it however you want, and uh, so that's very interesting as well. Every style of weapon has a unique set of animations and feels different. This one's very, very interesting. Nintendo says there are no invincible weapons in the game. That kind of makes me question, will the Master Sword somehow be uh, breakable or damageable in some way or another? And that would be very, very strange that this has always been a sword of power that uh, was used to slay Ganondorf. So I really hope, I really hope that you cannot break the Master Sword or damage it in any way. One other uh, very interesting thing that Aonuma said is Zelda can actually get mad at you and scold you in the dialogue, which is very interesting. Be uh, very interesting to see that happen. Some other things Aonuma said, he confirms that Breath of the Wild is after Ocarina of Time, so it's not before, so I mean that gives you three timelines rather than four, takes away one of them, which most people were kind of assured that it was not before Ocarina of Time anyways. Um, players can obviously see the ending without uh, seeing everything from the story. Uh, a certain element was added in the game to make for a more cohesive storyline. Aonuma wanted players to choose their own path, so no companion character in this game. Most difficult Zelda game for them to make, and Aonuma says is he's still finding new things in the world. All right, my friends, so this is the part you guys have probably been waiting for the most, the juicy information on the dungeons, okay? So Nintendo took Game Informer directly to the dungeon as they did not want them to see how you get to the dungeon. Now, this is also worth noting that Aonuma says something along the lines that, uh, you know, they, they were thinking about dungeon and, and, and how to create dungeons and things like that, and they're thinking how in Twilight Princess, they're making dungeons a lot bigger they're packing a lot of stuff into them and they figured you know that they found that it was more enjoyable getting to the dungeons than actually playing the dungeons now I would beg to differ I have a lot of fun getting to the dungeon but I also really quite enjoy going through the dungeon as well um, but because of that they made the dungeons a little bit shorter and uh, kind of made the journey of discovering how to get to them a little bit more interesting and I guess maybe harder to figure out so these dungeons are constantly moving. Now, this is why these dungeons are the four mechanical beasts that we see in some of the trailers. We see three out of four of them in the trailers, which is the elephant, the uh, camel, the uh, the the bird in uh, in the sky, and the. Uh, the chameleon, if you will. So those are the four mechanical beasts. Those are the dungeons. You have to go inside of them, and those are going to be the dungeons. So they're constantly moving. Got to figure out how to get inside of them. Now, Game Informer says that Link must manipulate the entire enormous mechanism through his own ingenuity. And so you can kind of rotate the mechanism to kind of figure out how to get through it and things like that, which is going to make it very, very interesting and a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit harder to figure out the puzzles. Players can skip dungeons if they want and go straight to Calamity Ganon as we know, but of course if you do that you're going to be missing a load of story, you're going to be missing a load of content. Um, the substance known as Malice covers the dungeon. Uh, this Malice thing which you guys can see um, is something that Link will get hurt if he touches it, um, but it can be destroyed by finding and attacking each pocket of Malice's eyeball. The Sheikah Slate serves as Link's map, binoculars, and a whole lot more. You use the slate in the dungeon to see a 3D mo model and tilt the entire dungeon from here. I believe these are, are special kind of little areas where you have to put your slate onto, um, kind of like the shrines, you have to put them onto this uh, kind of slate pedestal thing or, or whatnot to uh, control the dungeon in such a way. So but doing so uh, slides blocks into place and opens up angles that you can use to paraglide to new locations. Um, there's a voice that tells you that you need to access terminals which uh, with the slate across the dungeon marked on your map. So again, those terminals is what I was talking about where you have to access them to tilt the dungeon and, and, and different things like that, I believe. Um, all bombs in the game are remote and don't blow up on a timer, so that's very interesting. Uh, simpler approach with dungeons in Breath of the Wild as I previously mentioned. Game Informer did not see the familiar chest opening animation and signature music, so that's a little bit sad. I hope it's in there somewhere. 
they never found a signature Zelda item or compass either. So normally in dungeons you find, you know, compass, a map, things like that. They never found any of that or, you know, a certain uh, item. So for example, we've seen in Water Temple and Ocarina of Time, for example, we got the long shot, just for one example. Um, they didn't see that. So that's very interesting. Again, it's kind of sad if that's not there. Um, so that's very interesting as well. And again, the Sheikah Slate with the terminals is how you see the uh, the map. So I guess you don't uh, need a dungeon map. All right, you guys ready for it? The boss in this temple, the name of the boss is Wind Blight Gen. And here he is, my friends. Look at that. That is so, so, so crazy. Wind Blight Ganon is the dungeon boss here. A voice tells you that it's one of Ganon's own and it plays dirty. Wind Blight Ganon is a huge monster. It has no face and a gun like arm. So, when a game informer player was battling Wind Blight Ganon, he used ice arrows to shoot him uh, and, and kind of bring him out of the sky, bring him down to the ground, if you will, as obviously he did not get any specific item in the dungeon. And uh, so he uh, he brought him out of the sky using an ice arrow and then he had a window to use his sword and slash Wind Blight Ganon. Uh, the sword made him angry and so he started creating tornadoes and firing large spikes at the player. The player then used bomb arrows to throw into the tornado uh, to get uh, and detonate them when he got close to Wind Blight Ganon and to bring him down as he was running out of arrows and uh, then again he proceeded to slash him with his sword and eventually he finished him off. Now I'm not sure exactly what happens after that uh, but he did fight him, he did beat him and uh, I don't think uh, he exactly says in the article what happens after but still interesting to say nonetheless we have a look at our first dungeon, we have a look at uh, uh, the, not only the name but what we we can see of one of the dungeon bosses. So that's all the information I have for you guys today in this video. I know it was a lengthy video, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed all that uh, uh, pack of information, man. There's a lot to take in, but let me know what you guys think about all of it in the comment section below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, please smash the like button, subscribe, the comment, share and all awesome stuff. I'll catch you guys in the next video like always. Until then, game on.